Today we're going to be talking about product management. So what's a product manager? Think of the product manager as the mini CEO of a product. They act as the voice of the customer, they own the value of the product and ultimately whether it's successful or a failure, and they also collaborate and compromise with designers, developers, stakeholders, sales, technical communicators, you name it. And this also includes end users. Of course, they have to make many decisions and we'll go into specifically what some of those decisions are in a little bit. They're generally experienced or maybe even an expert in a domain or an industry and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. They have to balance a lot of different customers priorities, especially if you're a very big product, you might have hundreds of types of customers and these customers might be very different from one another. So how do you balance what one customer wants over the other? And they have different strategies for how to, how to combat this issue. They also brainstorm and problem solve with the contributing team members, such as developers, designers, and more. So what's their role on a Scrum or Agile team? Well, the product manager has a short and a long-term strategy for the product and leads the team in fulfilling that strategy. So they decide what the focus will be, both long-term and short-term, so for the next two weeks or the next 18 months, they groom the backlog, which is to say that they prioritize all of the user stories by how they will meet certain business goals. And they use lots of info to do this, such as team velocity, which is again, how quickly a team can move, how many developers you have, and how much work can they do in a certain amount of time. They use KPIs or key performance indicators Metrics such as, you know, conversion, purchases made, money made, sales, analytics, which are hooked into how users use your tool. So where are they clicking? Where are they getting lost? Things like that. As well as customer requests that might come either through customers themselves if they have a close channel of communication. But typically for a larger company, these customer requests will come through a sales team or something similar. They also might conduct market research, or again, if it's a big company where they have a whole team dedicated to doing market research, that team may give the product owner the highlights and the key information he or she needs to know. They also work with the usability and UX researchers at their team to understand what are the results of the most recent studies, as well as current trends in the industry. I took this screenshot of a Slack conversation between a product manager who's named Nico and one of the developers, Cindy. These are people that I have worked with in the past. And notice the, the attention to detail Nico is taking as to how the users are using the product. Feel free to pause the video to read the entire conversation. Here's an example of looking at an analytics UI that might help a product manager or really anyone on the team see how people and users are using an application. Because ultimately, you need to understand what your users are doing to make good product decisions. They communicate with lots of other people to help them get all this information. Product managers need to have a long-term vision, but they have to know the day-to-day -day challenges of the team. This could be things like technical challenges, dev workloads, usability results, etc. Or it could be something as simple as, because it's spring break, everyone that has children or people that they take vacations with are going to be out of town and this impacts the team's immediate velocity. So because of this need to have all this information, a lot of product managers have multiple hours of meetings a day. And if you want to become a product manager one day, don't be too surprised to work more than 40 hours a week at times. How does design thinking drive product strategy? Well, by including stakeholders and users early in the planning phase, we get market and user insights. We also ensure that the end vision of the product remains user-centric because by using these insights, we discover initial use cases from activities such as empathy mapping, journey mapping, and storyboarding, among many, many others. Additionally, we prototype, and this early and inexpensive prototyping allows us to validate that the team is on the right track and not wasting time. The reason this is important is that a lot of a company's budget each year goes to paying employees. And when employees are spending the, their time that the company is paying them for on something that ultimately won't make the company as much money or enough money in return, there's an issue there with that product and someone has to be held responsible for that. And it might be the product owner depending on the circumstances. The other thing is be, by doing this early prototyping and having this big picture very clear in everyone's mind and everyone's aligned early on, 
we can make sure that research and budget estimations are accurate instead of a wild guess in the dark that ends up being highly inaccurate farther down the line. And as we learned with design thinking, failing fast is good, failing late in the game is very bad. But the other reason that design thinking is great is that we bring in other team members like dev, technical communicators, UX, and all these other people. And by having these unique and varied perspectives, it enriches the product strategy. Because at the end of the day, a product manager or a product owner, which is sometimes used interchangeably, but sometimes it means different things at different companies, is half strategist, half contributing team member. They're not just sitting in an ivory tower telling people what to do. So business and strategy people tend to be a little bit farther removed from the project and they have a higher level view of what's going on day to day. But great product managers are in the weeds with their team, understanding the status of the project and helping to remove roadblocks. Of course, they will need to have a long-term goal and they'll need to set time aside to work on that long-term goal, but they are still invested in the day-to-day -day outcomes of the team. So you might want to know, how do you become a product manager? And there's lots of ways, but there are two very common paths. In this hypothetical situation, let's say there's a product manager for a banking app. So one, maybe someone works in the banking industry for many years. Maybe they're a teller, working their way up to becoming a customer specialist, or even a branch manager, etc. They know the lingo, they know the industry history, and what it's like to perform this job. They also know what problems banking customers have. And this industry knowledge doesn't automatically qualify someone to be a product manager. They will, of course, have to learn all the techn technology aspects of the job, like agile, scrum development, user experience, etc. The second track is almost the opposite of this. Going to college or getting some kind of certification in the business and strategy side of things, so you learn about product development, you learn about market segmentation, differentiation, revenue models, and more. And then you gain experience in a specific industry, such as banking, and you learn from that point about the users, their problems, and whatever else you need to know. Neither of these tracks are better than the other, as both require effort in bridging any personal gaps. Some just fit different people's lives a little bit better than the other. You might be wondering about what skills you'll need and what you'll need to understand. Well, first, Product managers are great leaders, they know how to influence and persuade, and they also know how to communicate, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in this slide. They also know how to lead in innovation and how to be very creative, and they're open to new ideas, and they know how to extract these innovative ideas out of other people. They also know how to analyze common trends and techniques for success, as well as creating and managing budgets and plans of work and making sure that people stay on track of those plans once they've been created. They also know how to define requirements and use cases. They know financial analysis and strategy. And they understand technical platforms, at least at a high level, regarding technical services and code basics. Um, they also do have excellent communication. And I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but specifically they have brief, clear writing styles. And this is because a lot of times things like emails or documentation don't tend to be the main part of anyone's job in the technology development team, but those are things that they have to do as required steps to doing some other task. And so helping people get whatever they need to understand as clearly and as quickly as possible is always going to be better. They also know when to ask for help or admit that they don't know something because, as I just mentioned, there's lots of things that they are required to understand to, that will go into how they prioritize the backlog. And so it's, it's only natural that they'll need to reach out for help occasionally. And they also know when to engage with different teams and colleagues, like planning and multitasking um, these different people and helping them get all into the same room, which can be hard to do when you've got a lot of different schedules you're trying to accommodate. You might also be wondering about what challenges you'll face. Well, one of the challenges is that you'll essentially be the one responsible for the success or failure of the product, or maybe not even the product as a whole, but the specific project or undertaking that's going on currently. So let's say there's like a 2.0 revamp of a product going on that lasts for six months. It might just be that the success or failure applies to that specific initiative. Um, you also have a lot of visibility to upper management, which again can be very good if, you're, if everything's going well and your name is being said in a positive way. Um, but of course, if there are things that are not going quite right, your name will be the one that rises to the top in terms of 
when people want to start asking questions. Also, one challenge that you'll have to face very often is balancing the priorities and getting the right proportions for success of those priorities because a lot of people are going to be tugging at your shirt trying to get you to do things for them because their, pri their perspective is that the thing that they want is done is very important. Um, and you'll have to have a wider view, a wider scope of the situation and know how to prioritize it. And again, as I mentioned on the previous slide, because of all the areas where they contribute, they have to have a base level of a lot of different industries and disciplines. So they're kind of like a jack or jill of all trades. But even though they know a lot of different uh, t disciplines and they have a lot of information, they do need to know when to stay in their lane. And they need to know to focus on tasks that are directly in their responsibilities because their time is best spent allowing certain team members to take ownership of those decisions that relate specifically to them. So it's okay to check in with them and see how things are going, but being clear to not overstep those boundaries and try to take control of everything. Um, because if you don't learn to give up some control and trust your team, not only will your day be too full of meetings to complete in a single day anyway, but you also won't have any time in your day to get actual work done that's related to your job that doesn't have to do with meetings. Additionally, being an expert in your users and their tasks to know their use cases that will help you create user stories, which then are ultimately prioritized in the backlog by the product owner. The most important job for a product owner is to decide what not to build, and then, of course, to take the consequences of that action because you will always have more stories and more goals than you can complete in a single time frame. You will always have stories left over in the backlog that ultimately will just sit there and never be prioritized to be worked next, and they'll just sit there indefinitely. And so knowing what not to build is one of the big strengths that a product manager has. So thank you for watching this presentation, and please contact your instructor if you have any questions. Thank you.